Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a cool light reveal effect. You might have seen something like this on CSI when they bring out the magic UV light, or even in horror games when you're using your flashlight to reveal hidden messages. No matter the use, it's a flexible effect that you can apply to almost any shader. Let's examine the included sample before we begin. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can find it in the official example folder under UV light reveal. We'll be using a custom lighting shader in this example, but don't worry if you're not familiar with it, I'll take this opportunity to cover a few basic concepts. Let's take a closer look by pressing Shift Space to maximize the window. As you can see, we're simply adding our UV texture on top of our base texture. The trick here, so to speak, is finding the correct lighting information in order to apply it only when it's below our spotlight and if the spotlight corresponds to our selected color. This area is responsible for applying basic lighting to our shader. It is here that we filter the actual lights used and check if the color matches. I'll go into detail as we build our own shader. Let's start by creating a new shader. Right click, create, amplify shader, surface shader. Let's name the file. Let's name the shader. I'll call it light reveal. And let's also change its light model to custom lighting. Since we need to access specific lighting information, we need to change its light model before we begin. Otherwise, most of the nodes will not be available, as they are exclusive to custom lighting. Let's compile. Create a new material, right click, create, material, and let's apply it to our plane mesh. Let's start by adding our two textures. I'll use the shortcut T and left click. Let's call this one base texture. Let's select the wood texture. Let's clone it using Ctrl D on a Windows machine, of course. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's Command D. Let's name it UV Texture and select our UV Texture. Of course, you can use any texture you would like. This is just an example. Let's compile and let's make sure that we are in material mode. As you can see from the green border, we're in shader mode. Keep in mind that values set in a shader will affect all materials using it, while material properties are specific to each material. When simultaneously editing a material and shader, it's important to pay close attention to which values are being altered. Let's double click the material to open it. If you're not familiar with shader and material mode, I recommend checking the link in the video description. If I were to simply add these two textures, the result would not be very interesting. As you can see, the UV light texture is on top of the wood, but it doesn't really work as it does not react to the actual lighting. We'll need to add a few additional nodes in order to properly display lighting information. Let's do that now. I'll start by adding a light color node. You can find it under light, light color. Let's also add a light attenuation node. As the name hints, the light color node provides the light color and the intensity. You can use it separately or you can use its RGBA value. Do note that A stands for intensity. In order to properly display lighting information, you will need to use the light attenuation node as it contains the actual unity light and shadow information. You will simply need to multiply them both in order to display simple lighting. I'll use M and left click to create the multiply node. Let's connect it to the proper input channel, the custom lighting input. I'll disconnect the emission, as this was just a simple example, and compile. I want to take this information and apply it to our base texture. To do so, I'll simply have to multiply its result with the actual base texture. Let me just move this and add another multiply node. I'll use alt drag to add it to the existing connection. I can also change its input port by simply dragging it. I'll connect the base texture, and as you can see, the shader now uses the base texture and our basic lighting information, with just a couple of nodes. Let's add a saturate node in order to avoid having incorrect values. As you may recall from our last tutorial, the saturate node works in a way similar to the clamp node. You can think of it as a clamp between 0 and 1. Right click, I'll use the search function, and add the saturate node. I'll alt drag into the existing wire, and compile. Let's add our UV texture on top of the base texture. I'll create an add node using the A key and left click. I'll drag and connect. We now have a basic example of what we're building, but uh, it's not working as we intend. We'll need to add a few more nodes in order to achieve the effect we're looking for. Let me zoom out 
and we'll start by creating a World Space Light Position node, also available in the Light category. Let's zoom in. The World Space Light Position is a crucial node to this node network. In this example, we won't need the light direction, but we'll need to know if our object is being lit by the spotlight. We'll want to filter our light type, so we'll use the type output of the World Space Light Position node. The type port will output 0 with directional lights and 1 with other types. Since we're using a spotlight, the value is going to be 1. This is going to be very helpful when building our mask that will control where the UV light texture will appear. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Before we add it on top of our texture, we're gonna mask it out. So let's add a multiply node, add it to the existing connection. Let's add another multiply node. Connect the resulting multiplication between the light attenuation and light color directly into this multiply node. Let's also get the type. Remember, since we're using a spotlight, this is going to return 1 if the object is being lit by the spotlight. So as you might have guessed, since it's going to be 1 multiplied by the values of your texture, it's going to be visible. Let's compile. As you may have noticed, the UV light texture is now being affected by the actual light available. It's not exactly what we're going to end up with, but I wanted to show you how it worked. Since both the spotlight and the point light output 1, the type port will output 1, which in turn is multiplied with the light attenuation and light color multiplication result. That specific value is then multiplied with our texture and added on top of our base texture. In simpler terms, what we're gonna end up with is a properly lit UV texture. Instead of simply being added as in an unlit form, so to speak, directly on top of our base texture, it's going to take into account the existing lighting. What we now need to do is filter the lighting information so that it's only affected by our spotlight. To do that, we'll need another light color node. We're going to take the type output and multiply it with our light color node. We're going to add a color node, set it to property. This is going to be our custom color. We're going to compare the light color to this specific value. You can use whatever you want. In this example, we're going for something along the lines of a UV light. Now we need to find a way to compare these two. This. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be where our spotlight information comes from. We're going to get its color and compare it. In order to avoid any unwanted values, we're going to use a component mask node. We'll connect the multiply node, remove the alpha channel as we only want to compare RGB. The same for our custom color. Let's take this chance to change its name. I'll clone the component mask node, connect our color. Let's normalize our values, and I'll explain in a second why we're doing this. One for each, and let's add a dot node. Connect both, and we're almost done. This is our main network for our color comparison. We're going to use a dot node to calculate the dot product between two colors. If you're not familiar with the dot operation, I recommend checking the links below. For normalized vectors, the dot operation returns 1 when both inputs point into the same direction, minus 1 if they point into completely opposite directions, or 0 if they're perpendicular. In our case, we simply need to be close to 1, as we're going to pass our value onto a if node with a specific threshold. Let's add an if node. I should point out that this is actually a community submitted node. We accept submissions directly in our website if you're interested in contributing to our editor. All submissions are fully credited and promoted. Let's connect our dot into the A input. Let's create a float using the shortcut key 1 and left click. Connect it to the B input. Let's take a closer look at our conditions. We want this node to output 1 when it's fairly close to 1. Being close to 1 means that our light color matches our custom color used for the comparison. And that means that we want to reveal our UV light texture. So, the dot outputs a value closer to 1. The B input is set to 1. If A is larger than B, we don't want to output anything. We want it to be set to 0, the default value. 
If A is equal to B, that means that we have the right color. So we want to output 1. If A is less than B, then we don't want to output anything other than 0, because that means that the light does not match. But this value is not going to be exactly 1, so we'll need to use the equal threshold. I'm going to use the shortcut key 1, set the maximum to 1, and I'll set its default value to 0 0.002. Let's set it to property and connect it to the equal threshold input. Let's recap. The dot node will output a value close to 1 when the light matches. If the light matches within our equal threshold, we'll want to output 1 directly from the if node. And it's that value that will drive where the UV texture will appear. Let's test it now. I'll add another multiply node. Let me just adjust the nodes a little bit. I'll alt drag the multiply node and connect our if node. And if I compile, you'll see the results. And as expected, our UV texture is gone. The plane is still affected by our point light, but the UV texture is not visible. Let's check our color to compare. I'll copy the value, select our spotlight, and as you can see, we had another color value set, so the UV texture is not visible. I'll simply set the value, and our UV light texture is now visible again. Pretty cool effect. You can use any color you want. It's a simple effect, but it's quite flexible, especially if you're building a horror game, a personal favorite. Uh, it's going to be really good to hide messages from your players. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video. Stay tuned for more.